Good morning and welcome. Today, we're celebrating the Lord's Supper. So gather together elements that are available to you. They should be common, not fancy, for we encounter God in everything around us. Let us pray. Wonderful God, we come to you with heavy hearts. There is so much happening in the world. Sometimes we are scared. Sometimes we are angry. Sometimes we don't know what to do with ourselves. Lord, open our hearts to your spirit that we may feel your presence and that we may encounter you in new ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in the call to worship. Followers of Jesus, by the, his cross we are redeemed from the futility of sin. Alleluia. By his rising, we are free from the fear of death. Alleluia. By his love, we are made new in the living and enduring word of God. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. And now let's sing our first hymn, I Love You, Lord. sins, both individually and corporately, because we have missed the mark. Our aim was not true. God's forgiveness blankets all that we do. So let us boldly confess together. Let us pray. Almighty God, our world is filled with corruption. Power disguises itself as truth. Convenience masquerades as goodness. Selfish pleasure imitates love. We, we confess, confess to you, O God, God that, that we have, have been, been caught in the web of the world's sin. sin. By, By the, the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit save us from these deceptions and free us for a glad obedience, that, that we may see the joy of Jesus' resurrection and receive the promise of abundant life. Amen. Followers of Jesus, God has promised abundance to us, to our children and to all those who are near and far. In the name of the Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us sing in response. And now we come to a time in our service 
for ministry with children. We have a wonderful opportunity today. I want to introduce it by talking about sharing. You know, when Jesus breaks the bread, he shares it. He takes something that's one and he breaks it into two. And that way, there's more to share. And by sharing that, he's including everyone around. And I think that's one of the lessons that we learn from communion, is that when we break the bread, when we share the cup, we are sharing not just these elements, but we're sharing our faith our faith in God, our faith in each other, and our faith in ourselves. By sharing who we are, by sharing what we have, we're opening up ourselves to what's called vulnerability. And we, come, we become vulnerable by sharing things. But that sharing things and that vulnerability offers a chance for our neighbors, our friends, our family, our church family, to also become vulnerable to accept the gift that we give. And in that vulnerability, a bond is formed. We become closer. We understand each other a little bit better. We have a sharing today from a family who is willing to share and be vulnerable about how they are coping with this COVID-19 um, isolation. So let's take a look. This is your host, Nora, and we would like to first show you, what is this? It's our classroom. Formerly known as? Room. Yes. All right. Classroom, formerly known as the dining room. This is music room number one. Okay. Now we are going to run down here to music room number two. And this is? Avi. Hello, Avi. <laughs> this is music room number two. Show us what you do here. All right. Very nice. Now we're gonna head to PE. This household is a little unique. It is tap dancing day. All right, go ahead. Okay. I'm going to do a little dance part for my uh, class dance. That's it for today. Goodbye. Next. <laughs> PE number two on the dance floor. All right. Girls, do we have anything to say to our fellow church members? Stay happy, quarantine will end. This is not a forever thing. Will you join me in the prayer for illumination? Lord, you opened the meaning of the scriptures to the disciples on the road to Emmaus and set their hearts ablaze. By the power of your spirit, kindle our hearts as we hear your word proclaimed that we may receive you with joy. Amen. So our scripture lessons this morning are 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 23, and Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Listen for the word of God. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. 
For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply, from the heart, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. Luke chapter 24 verses 13 through 35. Now that same day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one that was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in, in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on that day and how Jesus was recognized by them when they broke the bread.